Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I'm going to show you how I put together all of these fall DIYs using supplies from the Dollar Tree and a few items are from the Dollar Spot at Target. So let's get started. The first DIY, I'm going to DIY one of these little standing pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and I thought we could make it really cute with some of those little sticker uh, mesh acorns also from the Dollar Tree. And I got that little Hello Pumpkin from the Target Dollar Spot for a dollar. So I'm just going to use heat to pop off the little flower and the little raffia bow that was on there. And I was thinking that I could um, paint over this burlap that's on there. But I did find that it was kind of loose, so I decided to just peel it off. Um, that worked well, but look what's underneath of it. It's just nothing but glitter oh my gosh um I had no idea it looked like that underneath there I thought about maybe using that for the back but I really don't want a product um like the finished product to have glitter on it so I'm just gonna seal it with paint so I just put uh, a nice amount of ivory acrylic paint on there and I'm just gonna go all over hopefully sealing all of that glitter mess underneath <laughs> And that'll give me a nice base to work with. Um, a lot of you guys had requested fall DIYs that weren't coastal. And so that is what all of these DIYs are today. Um, they still go with coastal though because I use a lot of my own neutral colors and stuff like that. So I got that painted ivory. Now I did get a little bit on the wood base and it was a little darker than I would like anyway. So I'm just going to distress it all over just to kind of make it look um, more weathered. Now I wanna cover it with this diamond mesh stuff from the Dollar Tree with acorns on it. Unfortunately, it's not wide enough to go across the entire pumpkin, but I thought this would give me a really beautiful texture to DIY with. So I'm just kind of centering it I don't know um, why I centered it. I guess you could have started towards one side. And I thought I would just try to draw a pattern on it from the other side. Um, it was a little hard because of the stand because I couldn't lay it down flat. But I tried to just kind of rough sketch out what it would look like. Now this stuff is kind of hard to cut. So I went through a couple pairs of scissors before I could find some that could cut it. it ended up being my cheapest scissors from Dollar Tree. <laughs> We're able to cut right through that. And so I'm just kind of kind of cut it out, kind of compare it and see if we got like a good cut and nothing is hanging over the edges and just kind of trimming as I go. And this is going to cover most of one of those little pumpkins. And I love DIYing these pumpkins because they already have a stand and everything and they're a super cute size for decor. So just going to peel that off. It's super sticky and lay that on my pumpkin, making sure I get it lined up correctly. And now all I have to do is worry about the sides. Now you could just do um, the little tiny um, sequences on the side. I think that would be fine. I kind of wanted to continue that acorn pattern on, um, which probably made it a little bit more difficult, but I'm just trying to figure out how big of a piece. I started to kind of do it like one row at a time. And then um, I don't know if that was really the easiest way to do it though, but I just kind of cut a little piece off and just kept trimming and trimming and trimming until it fit. So we have that side of our little pumpkin done. Now on this side, I just cut out a big piece and stuck the whole thing on there and trimmed from the underside. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Even though it is kind of difficult to keep it staying stuck on there. And we have it covered with this. I want to um, also paint that. I just kind of want 
that there to provide me a great texture to um, work with. So again, I'm just using ivory acrylic and I'm just gonna go over all of it. I wanna give a nice ivory background to this little pumpkin DIY. I started here with um, a foam brush, but as you can see, it wasn't really getting down in there um, very well. It kind of was giving a good coat to the acorns and a little bit here. So I do switch to a brush just to get down in all those little nooks and crannies of that great texture that we've got going on there. And when you paint it all one color, it's gonna kind of disappear the pattern, but we're gonna do something else to it to help bring that out. So just using Antique Wax by Waverly and a foam brush, I am just lightly going over and it kind of distresses each one of the acorns and those little um, sequins on there and it gives you this great pattern. I'm gonna follow that up with a baby wipe just to make it a little bit lighter. I don't want it to be too dark of a brown. And just lightly distress that. Now I got this great little Hello Pumpkin, um, I guess ornament at um, Dollar Spot at Target for a dollar. And I thought we could just kind of hang that on the little pumpkin there. I thought it'd be kind of cute maybe to have it kind of off center a little bit like that. And so to make sure that it stays in place, I'm just going to hot glue it to the back of our little pumpkin and it can dangle over the front. Now I wanted to do like a little curly pumpkin tendril. So I'm using some of that wired juice from the Dollar Tree, wrapping it around an ink pen and I'm just gonna hot glue that to the back. You can't work with that stuff too much because the twine will definitely come off the wire. So just kind of um, make it longer than you need to because you're probably gonna need to trim it a little bit too. So just adding that on there, I was trying to figure out what to do with like the pumpkin stem of it. I didn't really want to wrap this one, but I thought it needed something. And so I thought one of these like little wood acorns from the Dollar Tree would be cute up there since we did the acorn pattern on the pumpkin. So I think I'm just going to use one of them. I'm not going to paint it. I'm going to stain it with the Antique Wax by Waverly. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and stain the little acorn part and wipe that excess off to give me a lighter stain. And then kind of use a little bit more on the cap um, to kind of make that part darker. I do also distress the acorn part just to really um, brighten that part of it up, make it lighter. And I'm just gonna attach that to the top of the pumpkin and that's gonna be the final little touch on this fall DIY. So I'm just gonna glue it onto the stem. I thought that added a fun little detail. And let me show you how this looks in my house. I think it turned out really cute. Hello, pumpkin. Those ornaments are really cute. I love those things from the do dollar spot at Target. I always try to pick those little dollar ornaments and decor up. Okay, our next DIY, I'm gonna use some of this, um, these little square wood panels from the Dollar Tree. You get six in a package and they're square. We're gonna need five today. And one of those little Hello Autumn glass decals from the fall section at the Dollar Tree. So we need five because I wanna make a planter box. So I'm gonna need all four sides and a bottom. I'm gonna start by just going ahead and painting these ivory with ivory acrylic. I um, kinda want a base coat. I, I kinda wanna do like a weather looking ivory for this DIY. Now, if you wanted a heavier duty one, like maybe one you wanted to use outside or something like that, they do have the square craft wood. That's the real thick wood but you'd have to buy five pieces where I got all of these for $1.25. So it would be more expensive, but you would have a more substantial a product at the end. But this was actually pretty sturdy. So we painted all of those ivory. Now I'm gonna use a, a brush from the Dollar Tree, a chippy brush and some antique wax by Waverly. And we're gonna kind of distress this dry brushing over like kind of like all in one direction 
lining them up together, I can do two at a time. Just giving me a nice distress. I'm going to follow that up with a baby wipe and wipe that down a little bit. It may have been a little darker than I wanted, so I'm going to go back and distress more with ivory just to brighten it up a little bit until I'm happy with it. And I think it's easier to paint it at this stage than after you go ahead and put it together. Okay, now I'm gonna use eight of those little mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree. And I am gonna make a um, structure here to put it together. So the first um, block I lay down flat, and that's gonna be the bottom of my planter. And then the second one I decided to put it up on its side because that way it would have more contact with the other piece that I'm going to glue it to. So one face down and then one face up. So I'm gonna need two panels exactly like this so that I can put together the box. I went all the way to the bottom with the first one like that so it could also have a way to glue on the bottom of our little planner box. So we're gonna build this one exactly the same, just attaching with hot glue and going all the way to the edge. Now we can start putting this together. So this is gonna be a side piece. I'm gonna put glue on the side. I'm gonna line that up to my next piece, making sure it was going the right direction and glue that together, trying to keep it as square as I can. And then we're gonna glue on the other side piece the same way. We kind of have a C shape at this point. And now we just need to glue on the last piece. I'm gonna add, add, put the hot glue on there, but also kind of hold it open because I wanna make sure that it stays square and that this piece doesn't like overhang on the sides. So you kind of have to act quick if you're gonna use hot glue. That looks really good. So now we can go ahead and attach the bottom. We have those Jenga blocks there we can use to glue that on. And that's what I'm gonna do, a little bit of hot glue on each one of those Jenga blocks and glue on the bottom. I probably didn't need to paint that piece, but it's always nice to have a finished piece, all sides. And it looks pretty good. I'm gonna kinda touch up the edges of that bottom piece and the tops that I didn't paint with a little bit of ivory. And I'm just gonna leave the inside unfinished like that because you're not gonna be able to see it. Now, I wanted to um, decorate this a little bit. And so I thought that that um, glass decal, this Hello Autumn glass decal from the Dollar Tree would be cute. Um, it's a great way to decorate items if you don't have a Cricut or you don't really wanna use one. And so you just peel and stick. Now, since I'm not doing glass, I am doing wood. You do have to scrape it pretty good. I'm gonna get it on there the way I want it. And I'm just gonna use a Cricut scraper. You could always use like a popsicle stick or whatever. And the trick to this is pull it back, see if it's down. If it's not, put it right back down and keep scraping. I do want this to look rustic. So if it's not perfect, it's going to be fine, but I want to get most of the image down if I can. Just scrape pull. If you see something sticking, there we go. Now I love it. It does look a little perfect though, so I'm just going to slightly distress over with the ivory just to kind of make it look a little bit more um, the same vibe as the rest of the planter. Just wiping off any if I get too much on there. Just a light dry brush. And we have a planter to do like a fall flower display. So the Dollar Tree has great fall flowers. And so I thought we could fill this up. Now, the only size foam I have is one of these square white foam blocks from the Dollar Tree that would fit in there. And so that's what we're going to use. It's not as easy to poke the flowers into that as the green, but we're going to make it work. To cover that up, we're going to use some of this um, Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree. 
just gluing it to the surface because it's pretty full and I don't want um, it to fall out. And that's gonna give us a great base to start with for our flower display. Now, I'm no expert on arranging flowers, but we're gonna do the best we can. I found this great um, piece. It has like cattails, um, little pine cones. It's got some really cute little fall decor on there. And so we're just gonna kind of spread those out, kind of cutting those as long as I can. Kind of spreading them out a little bit here, a little bit there, because I only have one of those. Now the next item we have there is like um, the yellow cattails. I thought those would be really cute too. That one kind of has a grass. And so I'm just gonna get the tag off of there and we can start arranging this one as well. I'm leaving the grass on there and just kind of cutting them as long as I can. And we're gonna kind of spread those out too. Now I use a total of one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five um, different sprigs. So I have those two, and then we're gonna add some flowers to it. I found these, they're kind of like, um, kind of like a yellowish tan burlap flower, fall flower from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna leave all the leaves on there and just cut those as well. I cut those with the little floral scissors from the Dollar Tree. They work really well to cut through that wire. And I want this to be the, the primary uh, flower of this. So we're gonna use two bunches of these flowers and kind of do it pretty evenly all over. Just pressing it down into that white foam. Now, when I got that done, I thought it was done, but I wanted like maybe a little bit more height. I'm gonna trim the grass a little bit, but I found this at the Dollar Tree as well. I think this is so pretty. It's like um, a grass, but it's also got these like feathers in there. And I thought that would be really cute for fall. And so we're gonna arrange the little feathers around. And that is gonna be the last piece here in this little, fall floral display. I think it turned out really cute. Let me show you how it looks. Our little DIY planter box filled with fall flowers. And I think it turned out really cute. I really love the colors and definitely it looks like I'm ready for fall. Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about our private Facebook group. I'll post a link below. It's a great way for you to show me what you're working on. I can show you what I'm working on. And I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. And I would love to see you over there. Okay, our next DIY, I'm going to use one of these little spring or summer hats, a wooden pumpkin from the Dollar Tree, and I originally was going to use that metal flower. I do end up using something else. Not flower, metal leaf. So we're going to start with the pumpkin. I love these plain wood pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. You can do anything with them. And this one turned out beautiful. I picked up this little hat. It's left over from summer or spring at the Dollar Tree. And I thought it would be a great source of seagrass because I kind of want this to look like a seagrass pumpkin. So the, the problem is trying to get like flat fabric out of this. So my first strategy is just to cut the brim of the hat off and that's gonna give me a nice circle of fabric. Now, since the pumpkin is kind of circular, we can kind of use that to our benefit to get started with. So to start with, I'm just gonna glue on part of it I'm trying to line it up the best I can. It's a little larger than my pumpkin. So I'm just gonna glue on the areas that I can, leaving it flat like that. Now um, to give it that pumpkin shape, I'm just gonna flip it over and using my fabric scissors, I'm just gonna trim as closely to the side of the wooden pumpkin that I can. And then we'll have a little, a few scrap pieces there. 
Now that worked really well, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just kind of lining it up, using hot glue to glue that down. And I did have enough fabric. They also have the little girls like purses made out of this fabric. If you had those or could find those, you could use that as well. And I'm doing the same thing. I glued it down and I cut off the excess fabric. Now for the middle part of the hat, I thought I'm gonna have to use uh, this part of the hat if I can get it flattened out. And so I cut it down the middle and then I'm cutting the very top of it off to give me another strip of fabric that we can work. So um, it's not quite as curved as it was before, but we're gonna make this work. So again, I'm just going to cut off a piece and then I'm gonna glue it down and then trim afterwards. So gluing down the area that I need and pressing down that hat part there. Then I'm just gonna lift it up and trim it with a slight overlap to where we had um, the pumpkin covered before. And that's gonna give me a nice curved piece of seagrass there. And the like little curves and the lines kind of adds to that pumpkin shape as well. So I'm gonna use that same piece and we're gonna cover the other side. We're just working towards the middle, um, trying to get everything covered on this wood pumpkin. So again, I just put a hot glue down on the wood part and then I'm just gonna go back, lift up and trim that to the curve shape that it should be overlapping the first one. Now the last piece, I was trying to figure out how I can cover it. Um, I decided to cut my last piece of the brim of the hat into little strips and I do end up using a couple of those, but I do still kind of need to cover the middle piece. The only part of the hat I have left is the top part of the hat. So I thought I would try to cut that in like a long oval shape, which is the part of the pumpkin like I still need to cover. And that worked really well. So I'm just gonna attach hot glue to that and glue that down in the center of our pumpkin. And then to frame it out, I thought I would use some of those individual pieces that we had left over. One on each side, and that gave me a great pumpkin shape. I love it. I'm not gonna cover the stem because we're gonna do something different there, but just trimming up any fabric I have left and we have an adorable seagrass pumpkin. I love how this turned out. Now it did make a big mess, so make sure you use your vacuum or whatever to clean up after yourself. And I'm just gonna attach a little bit of twine here on the back. I'm using a thicker twine from Walmart, I believe and just gonna wind that around until you can't see any of the wood pumpkin. You do have to use a little hot glue when you get to the end to make sure that it stays on there. And just kind of overlapping. It was a nice, a thick, chunky um, jute and gluing the excess to the back. And I'm just gonna burn off any of the fuzzies with a lighter to clean that up just a little bit. And I am loving how this turned out. Now I wanted to make a sign to put it on and I didn't have anything quite the right size, but I do have some of this craft wood from the Dollar Tree tree. And I thought I could put two together and we could have a beautiful thick wood sign for this. So I am just gonna clean them up because this craft wood is great, but sometimes it's kind of messy. Had a lot of splinters on the end of it. So I'm just using a sanding block from the Dollar Tree and we're not gonna cut this at all. It's the perfect size. I think if I put two of these craft wood pieces together, just gotta clean it up. Now this craft wood has one good finish side and one side that's real fuzzy. So make sure you're using the same side up as your other piece. And I'm just gonna use hot glue, a bead of it, pull it together and we just DIY'd a very easy wood sign that's gonna be very easy to finish. So I kinda wanna do this, um, that distressed ivory that we did for the planter. And so I'm just going all over that raw wood with some ivory acrylic. Kinda working in one direction, doing a nice a thin coat all over. 
I do like for some of the wood to show through. Then we're gonna distress it with one of those little chippy brushes from the Dollar Tree and some antique wax. Working in one direction, I really kind of want this to look like a really weathered wood project and I think it came out really beautiful. So first time I've made a sign with this um, size craft wood from the Dollar Tree and I really love how this turned out. Now I'm just gonna use a hanger I pulled off of another project from the Dollar Tree and just a sawtooth hanger, kind of a centering that on the back and using a hammer to put that in and we have a hanger for our sign. I'm gonna do that first while I don't have anything attached to it. I'll make it a little bit easier. Now the twine made the pumpkin sit up a little bit and so I kind of need something to um, prop up the bottom of the pumpkin. I'm just gonna use some of those wood dominoes. You can kind of use whatever you've got. I'm gonna glue several together until I get about the right height. And then I'm gonna use a hot glue on the stem and on those dominoes to kind of make it sit up a tiny bit away from the sign. A little bit of a 3D finish there when I attach that to the sign. Now, I was originally planning to use one of these galvanized metal leaves from the Dollar Tree on top, but I thought that covered a little bit too much of that beautiful pattern. So I decided to switch it up to one of these galvanized metal um, fall words from the Dollar Tree as well. You get three in a package. It says thankful, harvest, and welcome. So I thought welcome would be really cute on the front of our little pumpkin. And I just need a way to attach it. The two trim pieces that stick out the most um, would be the best place. And so I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of hot glue on those areas so that I can glue that to my pumpkin. And this is very lightweight, so it's not gonna need to be glued down everywhere, but just two spots definitely would work. Now I wanna do a quick little curly cue. So I'm using some of that wired jute from the Dollar Tree, wrapping it around a pen. And I have a little bit of room between the pumpkin and the wood sign where I can just glue that down inside and that will kind of poke out on the side of the pumpkin stem. Trimming it and trying not to work with it too much. Now for a leaf to decorate it, I thought I would use some of these white leaves from the Dollar Tree. They kind of have two different colors on there. There's like a larger like ivory one and a little bit smaller one that's more brown. So I thought I would use one of each. We can kind of layer those up there on this uh, bare part of the sign. And again, I have that little space between my pumpkin and the sign. And I'm just gonna glue the white leaf down first. Gluing that in place. And then gluing the brown one on top. Now sometimes these, this greenery from the Dollar Tree can be a little bit um, folded. And so I'm just using hot glue to make sure that it kind of stands straight open. And we have a seagrass welcome sign. I think this turned out so beautiful. I absolutely love the texture on there. And if I see more of those hats, I'm gonna pick them up because I love that fabric. A great inexpensive way to DIY something and give a great texture. And this is how the little welcome sign looks hanging in my home. So cute. Okay, so I still have that galvanized metal leaf that I wanted to DIY. So I thought I would make that into its own sign. So I'm gonna use that along with one of the long signs from the Dollar Tree. I'm using this one. Doesn't matter what you use though because I'm gonna cover it all up. Now I like these signs, it's a great size, but I'm gonna need it to be shorter because the leaf is not very long. And then I thought if I cut it, I could um, you know, layer it up and make it not thin like a Dollar Tree sign, which is one reason I love layering things from the Dollar Tree is to make it thicker. So I kind of measure how long I need my piece to be, and then I'm just gonna go to my saw and cut off a piece that would work for a back. It's okay that I have the star on there because um, it would be covered up, but I'm gonna use that as a reference to cut out a second piece out of that sign. And now we can layer those like that.
Now the um, piece that has the star cut out has like the cutout for the hanger and I'm gonna still use that part by reattaching the hanger that came with it. And then um, I'm gonna use the solid surface for the top and I thought it'd be cute if I covered it in burlap. I'm just using one of these burlap rolls from Walmart. It's the same exact width. So it's gonna have finished edges on it. And so I'm just gonna use those finished edges to hot glue that burlap on there. And that's gonna give me a great background for this little galvanized metal leaf. So I just made it a tiny bit longer than it needed to be on the top and the bottom. And we're just gonna go back and give that a quick trim. And then we can just attach those two signs together to give us a great little sign there. Um, just kind of sandwiching the hanger in between. I'm just gonna use hot glue to glue the two pieces of the sign together. I'd like to take a moment to thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm. Comment your favorite DIY below when you're done watching or just come say hello. And don't forget to subscribe. We are almost to 10,000 subscribers. So super exciting. So once I get that all together, I'm gonna go ahead and um, attach our little galvanized metal. I'm using a lot of metallic things today. And some of the DIYs, little finishes like this, I'm gonna leave that metallic. I'm gonna carefully hot glue that on, trying not to burn myself because that metal for sure gets hot. Now it left that little hole from the hanger. And so I'm just gonna take some Dollar Tree twine and cut a very simple little bow and glue that on. It provides a cute little detail for our sign. Also covers, covers up that annoying hole because there's really no way to patch that definitely on a galvanized metal piece. Now I thought it needed a little detail. It was looking a little plain. And so I'm just using a white paint pen and drawing on the little um, structure of the leaf just to provide um, a little extra something. So I kind of sketch it out. It was a little thin, so I'm just gonna go over it until I get like the little branches of the leaf, like the thickness that I want. And I think this definitely took it up a notch and definitely completed this little sign. And I'm gonna hang this little um, galvanized metal sign next to my pumpkin. I think they're gonna work well together here. And a very easy little Dollar Tree fall sign. They also have that in like the maple leaf. Okay, I found this great item at the Target Dollar Spot. It is a little wagon. And I think I got this in the spring and I thought it would be cute for fall so I kind of put it away and saved it. The galvanized metal works great for our DIYs today, but the black around the top and the black wheels do not. So I'm just using a small brush and some ivory and I'm distressing that black just to kind of make it less significant. And then I do the same thing on the tires. I don't want to dismantle this, so I'm just using a tiny brush and kind of distressing all over um, on those to make that not so bold because I don't have any black in any of the DIYs today. I thought that would kind of stand out a little bit to have black wheels on there. I thought this would be a great wag little um, wagon to fill up with pumpkins. So first I'm gonna use some of this floral moss from the Dollar Tree. This is kind of the browner kind of moss um, to fill up most of the wagon. And then we can use some of these little ivory pumpkins to do the rest. Now these pumpkins are on wires. And so I thought I could just pull them off. Um, the problem that I had with that is that it was ripping the bottom of them really bad. And so you could pull the whole wire off and stick that down in there. I didn't wanna really have to deal with the wires. And so I decided to start using my floral wire scissors and just cutting them off the wire. And that worked really well. I think I end up using four packages. So like maybe 16 pumpkins. They're kind of small. You can kind of use whatever you have. I didn't really want to use orange. I kind of wanted these colors to be all neutral today. 
Once I get enough, I realize that my wagon is a little plain and I thought I could decorate that up a bit. I'm gonna use some of these little rub on transfers from the fall section at the Dollar Tree and picked out like one with a couple pumpkins on there that would fit on there nicely. And we're just gonna stick that on the front. And again, these are just like the glass ones where you just kind of have to rub them on. So I'm just gonna scrape them with my Cricut scraper and kind of peel and stick. Um, I am kind of, I do kind of have a seam there. And I did the best I can. That looks pretty good. And then put our pumpkins back in there. Um, if you want to DIY a wagon, on my Facebook group, you can see that somebody made a little wagon out of one of those little um, wood bins from the Dollar Tree. That would work really well too, just add some wheels. Now, after I get it all in there, I decided I wanted my tires to look wood. And so I'm just going back and distressing that ivory paint on there with a chippy brush and some antique wax by Waverly to give a wood grain finish to those wheels. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so cute and perfect for fall, a little cart full of pumpkins. Now I found this pumpkin at the Dollar Tree. It is ceramic, it's heavy duty, and it's got this wonderful texture all over. It's white, which is gonna provide a really great um, base coat, so I don't even need to paint it. I thought I would just go over with some Antique Wax by Waverly to bring out that amazing pattern and texture all over the pumpkin. Just following that up with a baby wipe if I get too dark. Just trying to dry brush that all over. And this was so easy to DIY and it turned out so cool. Just wiping off any areas that I get a little bit too brown. Then I'm also gonna use that Antique Wax by Waverly to stain the stem. And the little brush marks in there kind of make it look a little bit even more realistic. And the only thing is, is that if you're gonna paint with the antique wax, it's gonna take a little bit of time to dry. It doesn't dry like paint. But there's our little texture pumpkin. I think this turned out so cute and I love the colors and the texture. This is just an ivory like flocked gourd that I got at the Target Dollar Spot, I believe last year. I thought that would work well. And then I got this little leather pumpkin at Dollar Tree this year. So it's a little bit darker than the other projects we're using today. I love the leather though, but I thought we could redo this stem. So the first thing I'm doing is going over it with some ivory acrylic. The plastic stem just kind of really made it look cheap, even though the leather of the pumpkin's really nice. So I'm going over it the best I can, trying not to get any of the paint on the leather. And then I'm gonna distress that with some Antique Wax by Waverly and it's gonna give us more of a realistic looking stem. And it brightened the project up a little bit as well. And so there's our little leather Dollar Tree pumpkin. And I'm gonna display that with the little textured pumpkin. I think they look so cute together. And there's our little gourd using some risers from the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Spot. Speaking of the Dollar Spot at Target, I got this great little tiered tray there. It's kind of a cool shape. I've never used it before. And I thought we could decorate that with some fall items. So the first item I found at the Dollar Tree, isn't this cute for $1.25? It's a little Hello Autumn envelope. It's like got the galvanized metal on there. It's got some great neutral colors. I thought it looked a little papery though. So I thought I would distress it just a little bit with some ivory um, to give it more of a hand painted finish and less like a perfect paper image. So I'm just gonna dry brush over that lightly just to kind of make it go with a lot of the projects that we've done today. A little bit more farmhouse. And it's got that great hanger on there. So I thought I would use that to my advantage and we're just gonna hang that on this little um, tear tray that I got at the Target Dollar Spot. So just pulling the beads down on that, I can just loop that over the top. And I also don't really need to put anything on that bottom shelf in the middle because that kind of covers the whole area up, but I think it turned out really cute like that. Now I just need a few more items to decorate it with. I got this little wood look um, pumpkin with my monogram on it at Dollar Tree last year and never used it. 
And then I got that this one at the dollar spot at Target this year for a dollar. Um, it's a little um, yarn wrapped pumpkin. And then I found uh, this leaf dish at the thrift store. Um, it's this great metallic brass. I got it half price, so it was like a dollar fifty. The thrift store is always a great place to find classic pieces like this that never go out of style. So all I have to do on this one is just take the tag off the back. And we're going to stand that on the top of that little tear tray. It's a pretty small tear tray, so it doesn't take a whole lot to fill this up. And this is how it looks with our little envelope hanging on the front, our little pumpkins, and our little thrift fine leaf on the top. Okay guys, it's time for the final reveal. But first I wanna give a huge thank you to the following Crafty Beach Bums for sending super thanks underneath my videos. I appreciate you so much. And also to these Crafty Beach Bums for buying me a coffee. On the super thanks feature, you can tip your favorite creator as little as $2 and buy me a copy as a nice $5 tip for your favorite creator on YouTube. And thank you so much. Here we go, it's the final reveal. Thank you so much for watching. Open up the window. I'm breathing in the last of September. I can feel the wind blow. Summer sky is like a giant ember Everything is turning into gold When the autumn leaves are playing Chase it puts a smile up on my face They leave their branches one by one Long.